but rolling it little by little. And? We're sorting through everything, you know? That's good. So no labs yet? Not quite, no. Hoping for the end of the week. If not? I'll leave a note for the on-call. You know, we're, we're on it, Chief, right? Thank you, Charlie. It's a process to diagnose. Diagnose? Yeah, a diagnosis. We can, so we can properly create some kind of treatment. So what are you thinking? Well, I've never administered 122 <laughs> units of blood before, for one thing, and she has the whole hospital bank, blood bank to thank for that. When the stomach ruptured, there was so much damage into her intestines, you know, we, we've just never seen anything like that before. Yeah, the team and I are just trying to, you know, get more background information on everything, you know, so we can uh, come up with some sort of kind of process to see what triggered it. Uh, I've been calling her friends, parents. They told me she'd leave class many times and hey, It was more than that, actually. She was really anxious. I thought it was like her bugging out with the typical senior year stress and whatnot, but it just never died down. Right. And this terrible pain in her stomach. Did anything else change? No. Susan, I I'm trying to help. I'm just saying that nothing changed. You can't treat somebody if you don't know what they're what went wrong, right, Doc? Yes, Charlie, it's just yeah, that. She became very withdrawn, secretive. Teen girls. Pretty unlikable. Phil! Type A perfectionism. Textbook case of eating disorder. Teen Phil's uh, it's best if we just write bulimia in the chart. What? Well, with a ruptured stomach and damaged under her intestines. Her esophagus was in perfect shape. That, that, that's just not plausible, Charlie. She was a singer. That's something she could never do to her voice. She wouldn't even use ketchup, the acid. Well, that's what your dad said and said, you know, not to catch it. Oh, oh crap. I, I'm still on call. I guess I can't escape it too long. Give me a sec. Steps outside for a moment. Phil picks up guitar and starts to strum. Truth is, something changed. Eating disorder? Hi, sorry. Actually, her teacher called us after their dinner with the Safs around February, I think. Uh, Recommended that she take a couple of weeks off to rest. Really? Out of the blue? Well, yes. A medical leave? Yes. So she was sick before? No! Or at least purging? No! Truth is, we don't know. Did she ever threaten to take her own life? Of course not! Threatened mine a lot. <laughs> Mark, our team is trying to save your daughter's life. I mean, was she pregnant? You know, side effects from birth Charlie, control? she was not pregnant. Your fellow came in here the other day and explained that a, a genetic factor might be involved, uh, something that constricted the bands around her stomach. Ulcer, right, Mark? It was an ulcer, they said. Yes, what did they say about that? Someone said a stress ulcer was growing that was causing this intense stomach pain. Stress? Well, genetic factors would require a new set of diagnosis uh, and screening. So I, I can try to put an order in, but I doubt it'll happen before the weekend. Well, what would that involve? A few CT scans, simple. Simple. <laughs> See her glowing from the radiation? I'll put an order in with the fellow. Yeah, maybe they can get her done before this Friday. Thanks, Charlie. Wait, taking a note out from her purse. What? What's this? Just a <clears throat> note. A note of what, Susan? Something I hold on to, Mark. Uh, hard to read. Uh, I, I can't read this, Susan. It's nothing. <clears throat> okay then, Chief. Sarah will follow up with you tonight. Mark? What is it? Susan shakes her head, bites her lip, leans on hospital bed railing, and tucks note away. Susan! Leave her alone, Dad. Something you wanted to tell me, Susan? She doesn't like talking about these things. <laughs> no! James, we said she wasn't. Susan, please. If they can find answers with a diagnosis. But it's. What, Mom? The note. Susan! Mom, <laughs> if they can get her in for a CT scan this week, we... Susan, you're wasting our time. Pat. Blaine. He... Who's Blaine? <sighs> he was doing things. Blaine... Blaine? Is that a note from Blaine, Mom? <sighs> rape? Was she raped? I don't... Blaine was... Pat's voice teacher. Her 60-year-old voice teacher. Oh, Mom. 
Mark grabs Note out of Stoller's hands, who is still engrossed in reading it. Go, Charlie! Mark crumples up Note and starts to tear it up furiously. Instinct, Susan! All I have is that note! Damn it, Susan! No one listens to the realist! No one hears the guy who has no faith in people! People are dirt bags! Bags of shit, Dad. Susan! She's our baby, Mark! She'll be okay! Damn psychopath! And I let him in our goddamn house like a fucking terrorist! What is he going to write? It doesn't matter now. Mark, I see these things on Dateline, and then my own daughter... I took her to lessons every week. Because of you! Every week. Like a fucking pimp, Susan. I can't trust people anymore. I didn't trust people to begin with. We really bonded right before this. We, it's like she wanted to tell me something, and she just couldn't, so she just tried to get as close to me, and she couldn't. I hate to say it, but I liked it. Bastard. It was like she was opening up, and we were going to heal together after this man that wrecked our home. It, it was going to be our new start. So then how? The scum. We're total idiots. Mark! Total idiots. That is the last happy memory I can remember. We were going to get therapy and everything. She was going to make the calls. Then all I remember is, God, I, I, I don't... You, Susan! We all listened to you. I don't even remember what I said or where she... Fuck me! You, Mark! You! Fuck me! Uh, where are you going? A walk! Oh, you will not leave with your pride, Mark. You will not have leave here nobly thinking you knew all along that I was the blonde bimbo idiot, the all-trusting daughter of Holocaust parents that let us Sociopath into our home. Oh, I will stop, not let you Susan. tell that story to yourself that your mother pushed you against stop the wall it. and told you you were going to make something of yourself and be a doctor or else how you lived off of pennies, working for every cent, the ugly stepchild, worked to the bone to earn what little you have, protested with all your might against a predator led into our home against your will, fighting and fighting all along. You will not tell that story for Mom, us. stop it. I am not the one who brought this evil into our homes. You are not the victim. You loved him too. I'm taking a walk. He leaves slowly, carrying the weight of the world. Blackout, end of act two. Will now be a 10 minute intermission. No.